everyone, and welcome to another edition of Paul's Cinema Picks of the Week. I am your host, Brantford's film enthusiast, Paul Westbrook. And first, I wanted to show off my glasses. I'm not going to wear them very long. I just wanted to wear them so everybody can see them. So hopefully you like them. So when you write a comment, like we always ask you to do, make sure you can comment on my glasses. I'd actually like to hear some input on that. Anyway, taking the glasses off, and yep, there's my beautiful face. <laughs> There's in person, well, at least it's somewhat beautiful. But anyway, um, getting on to the show today. And the show's subject is uh, actor David Warner. We lost David Warner this week. He died at uh, the age of 80 years old. Yes, he was just four days or so short of his 81st birthday. And uh, I remember hearing the news. And uh, he was a very popular and well known British actor who played in a lot of. A lot of films, more films than I can even probably name. But today I brought at least three prominent films that he had starred in, which I'm going to be discussing today. And yeah, he was one of my favorite actors. And what I like about David Warner is that uh, usually when he would play a villain, he had this intellectual side to him. So it wasn't just it wasn't just a straight mustache twirling uh, bad guy. He was the type of villain that when you had to deal with him as an adversary, he would usually use a lot of intellect to uh, to go against you, and it made it even more of a credible threat when he would uh, be against you in the film. He's played a few good guys, but I liked mostly his uh, roles as an antagonist. And in fact, the three films that I've actually brought for you to see today to look at he plays the antagonist. He's the villain. Villain of the piece. So, I'm going to um, start with the first one. First movie he did. And, oh, there's another theme to this. Every one of them has the letter T. Okay. First one is Disney's Tron. Now, I have to ask my sis. Have you ever seen the movie Tron? I think so. Yeah, it was basically about a guy that uh, worked at a computer lab, and then he gets sucked into the computer. Yep, seen it. the computer. Okay, you've seen it, yes. And, yes, that was Bruce. Bruce? I can't say, say his name right. Bruce Foxlighter. I guess that's how they would say. But, anyway, uh, yes. David Warner's in this. He plays the dual role. He plays Abner Devereaux, who is the guy that runs the uh, place. And he also runs the uh, computer lab. And inside the computer, he plays the villainous Sark, which is one of the uh, the leader of the soldiers that are inside the computer world where Flynn, played by Jeff Bridges, is sucked into. And I thought he did. I thought he was an incredible villain in this movie. And it retained a lot of his intellectual uh, acumen in it. And uh, yeah, this movie for its time was very revolutionary because of the uh, the way they'd use the, uh, the computer effects, like inside the computer world, the cars and the different uh, the buildings that were lit up and stuff. It was all like what inside of a computer would be. And for 1982, it was pretty good because you didn't have, you didn't really have CGI like you would today. So um, in uh, Tron, yeah, you, what you got to see was very imaginative in its own right. And, yes, David Warner plays the villain. He played, like I said, he played Sark, and he played Devereaux, who ran the computer place. And it for it seemed like a small role for him, but at the same time it was very, very effective and menacing and memorable to play a role like that, especially when he plays Sark. And... It was the movie that actually introduced me to David Warner for the first time, because I'd never really seen a lot of his other movies up to that point. So, yeah, in this one, he's memorable for being one of the uh, the big villains. Second movie I'm going to go through. Yes, it starts with T, just like I said. Is Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet, Titanic. And David Warner is in this one, too. He plays the part of Spicer Lovejoy. He is the uh, personal valet 
to Billy Zane's character, Cal Hockley, and let's just say he he's a bit of a, you know what, I can't really say it because it's, uh, that would be R-rated, so he's a jerk, let's put it this way. He's a real jerk, he tries to keep Leo away from Kate because uh, Hockley's going to be marrying her and... Uh, Lovejoy can't have uh, DiCaprio around because DiCaprio is considered low class because he's like in a steerage area of the uh, Titanic ship. And Lovejoy is one of the memorable villains. Like, you'd think that Billy Zane was the main villain because of the fact that uh, he's uh, heavily featured in the movie, but no. The um, in, When I saw it, the one that really struck my memory was Spicer Lovejoy. And David Warner again brings his menace to the rule and and puts off a very effective performance. And in this one here, this is I got this on Blu-ray. There's a deleted scene where because uh, you don't see it in the main film, uh, Lovejoy and DiCaprio's character uh, get into a fight. Like you don't see it in the main movie, but in the deleted scenes, you actually see the full fight between the two of them which I'd been hoping had been in the movie, so when I didn't really see it in the movie, I thought it was anticlimactic, so when I got the blue, when I finally got the Blu-ray and got a chance to see that, I was like, oh, do oh, great, get to see the big fight. So, yeah, and David Warner uh, pulled that role off really good as well. Now, the main role that I really enjoyed David Warner in was Time After Time. And this is about um, H.G. Wells and Jack the Ripper. And Ripper is under the name John Wesley Stevenson. And he's a friend of H.G. Wells, you know, the famed writer who wrote The Time Machine and War of the Worlds. And what happens is uh, Jack the Ripper, or John Wesley Stevenson, his other name, steals uh, Wells' time machine and goes to 1979. And... What happens is Wells has to go after um, the Ripper and try and stop him before he actually uh, kills the girl that he meets when he goes when Wells goes to uh, the modern time and then he meets a lovely girl who works at a bank and played by Mary Steen Virgin and what happens is uh, Wells has to stop the Ripper because the Ripper has been stalking different girls and eventually. He meets up with um, Mary Steenburgen's character, and what happens then is that Wells has to try and stop the murder. I can't really say what happens, because like I said, I, know, I don't give any spoilers away on these shows. But yeah, what happens is uh, it's more Wells' pursuit of uh, the Ripper, and David Warner's at his most menacing. He the intellectual back-and-forth bantering that he does with uh, Malcolm McDowell, yes, who plays H.G. Wells. Malcolm McDowell, you remember him from Clockwork Orange. And he um, he pursues him, but it's at the same time, it's the intellectual banter that really makes the acting pop hard. Like, you get Malcolm McDowell and you get uh, David Warner back and forth constantly in the movie. And I thought it was one of Warner's most menacing roles. Uh, playing uh, such a um, historical figure like Jack the Ripper. And uh, I first saw this movie on TV, really enjoyed it, then later got it on uh, video here, and I've kept a watch on it ever since. But yes, those are three of David Warner's top top films, and um, he's certainly going to be well missed in the uh, acting community because he did a lot of British uh, shows. He's done TV shows as well. He was also in Star Trek Six, I believe, five or six, one of the two. And he's done a lot of uh, TV shows, a lot of British productions. And it was actually very well known for doing Shakespeare. So, being that this is a tribute show to him, I wish him rest in peace and send the condolences to his family and his friends. David Warner, a great actor, he would be sorely missed. And that's our look a little bit and a tribute to David Warner. So um, if you like the video, remember to, remember to like and subscribe to our channel. Remember to check us over on Facebook as well as we have the uh, uh, 
um, Cinemapix Facebook page that um, we put up. My sister had put that up. I have to give her full credit for that. That wasn't me. <laughs> and uh, yes, please leave some comments on this because it would be very important, especially being that this is um, the week David Warner passed. And uh, if, if anybody's ever heard of David Warner, and hopefully quite a few people have, they'll leave some uh, comments. But for now, this is Paul Westbrook signing off and reminding you that I'll be seeing you at the movies. And again, rest in peace, David Warner.